Hi, I'm Fred with Quality One Engravers. Today we're going to show you how to set a cutter. And this is a typical spindle that's used on the New Hermes system, but basically all spindles are pretty much the same. They've all got a lower micrometer, usually a top pulley. This one happens to have an internal float mechanism. This is the typical spindle, and I'll show you the components. The bottom, this is a nose assembly which spins off, and it consists of usually a vacuum tube, ours is stainless, a locking nut, and in this case, this is a Delrin nose held in by a, a snap ring. This here is the lower micrometer, and this spins off. We have our pointer assembly. Other pointers assemblies use a friction lock. Our uses a locking screw, which works a lot better. This winds off. And this will expose your center shaft of your spindle. The center shaft extends up to the top where your pulley, where your belt usually rides. This particular spindle has a built-in float mechanism to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, put this, put the parts right back on. Again, the lower micrometer. I'm going to take it all the way to the top. Take the nose. And I'm going to do it off the machine, and then I'm going to show you on the machine. So here I've got it wound to all the way to the top and I can see it's pointing between 5 and 10. What I need to do is make usable adjustments. So if I take it down to the first zero I've accomplished seven thousandths or so of usable adjustment. If I go down another turn, each turn is 25 thousandths. So now I've got 32 thousandths of usable adjustment. If I go down another turn, I have close to 50 thousandths of usable adjustment. Typically, that's more than enough for most engraving. Some people do cut out through 16th inch material and may have to go three turns down, which would give them 75 plus whatever the initial number was. But for this, this is what I call a convenient zero. And usually two turns giving you 50 thousandths is more than enough. The further that you go down, the harder it is on your spindle, and the harder it is holding it in place. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a cutter, take it out of adjustment. This is a spline wrench. Wind it in the top of the spindle. It's left-hand thread. And uh, because I've got it held in my hand here, I will undo the cutter and gently take it down to the bottom cinch it and now the cutter and the bottom of the spindle are at the same uh, surface. Alright, now we're going to try to do the same thing on the spindle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wind the micrometer all the way to the top. I can see it's pointing to about five. I go to the first zero down. I'm sorry, when it's already at the top I go down to the initial zero. Then I go down one zero, so I've gone down 25 thousandths, and I go down two, two times to zero. So here's my second round to zero. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cutter, and I'm going to take it well out of adjustment, and insert it into the spindle. This is a left hand thread. can see that it's not protruding through. Now with this system, with our system, I'm going to just arrow out over the material. I'm going to do a Z-set and use the number 9 key to take it down to the material. And of course every machine is a little different. I usually like to get within an eighth of an inch. And if you're comfortable using shim stock or if your eyes are real good, you can see when it touches the material. But I'm going to be going down slow. And I can feel a little bit of drag, and I give it just one more shot. This happens to be 3,000 shim stock. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the, the spline and slide it down till it touches the material, and then tighten it up. Now, if I wanted to, I could take other tools that I have here and do the same thing to them and adjust all of my tools at this point, at this time. 
take them out of adjustment, loosen the set screw, take it down to the material, tighten it, and now that one's also zero. And on this machine, I've got my cutter set achieved and reset to home. And now I'm ready to engrave. Now, theoretically, the bottom of this tool is on the same surface as the bottom of the nose. But on this material, I know we need to go at least 7,000 step. So I'm going to crank it from zero to about seven. And I'm ready to send the job. Okay, so let's go ahead and send a job and hit the start button. Now, these are the results that you should get. You should get a consistent depth. If you feel underneath here, you'll feel that the cutter is extending. In this particular case, I have it extending just a little bit too far. It's close to 15. If I wanted to see what 10,000s did, I can just hit the start button. Now you can see by changing the, the micrometer position to 10 versus 15, you can see a consistent depth, but not quite deep enough. So if I did want the proper depth, remember if you're engraving about 10,000 steep, you're usually sending the job at about a 20,000th depth. That way you get the spindle to float. And you, may, you may be able to see this floating as it goes up. You can see it, but it's probably not perceivable. So here's the depth. Provided the nose touches the material, it'll always give you a consistent depth. Now, another trick, that tool that we have is also you can get one of these tools that will allow you to set all your cutters to the same length. So once you set one cutter, you set the tool, and then from thereafter, you set all your cutters to this tool.